Hey, John Dillon here with visualbroccoli.com. In this session, which I have titled Moving Pictures, is a technique I want to show you that I've used in video for many, many years. And you've seen it all the time in documentaries and how, how uh, videographers will take a static image and bring it to life by adding motion, by zooming in or zooming out. Very slowly in most cases, but it has a nice subtle and a very effective technique. So here's what we're going to do. We have this photo. This happens to be a training scenario. That's a mannequin there. And I want to bring a little life to it. And you notice there we had animation. The, the image got a little larger. It kind of rotated a little bit to the right and got a little larger going down to the left. So basically have three effects to it. And let's go ahead into PowerPoint and show you how this was done. And then I'll show you in part one how to do this 100% in PowerPoint. In part two, I'll show you how I created a template in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. So let's go ahead and see what this, uh, let's deconstruct this. So here I'm in PowerPoint, and again, the slide looks pretty standard here, but actually it's made up of a few different components. Here's my text that was done in PowerPoint. Now this particular style was done in Photoshop, and I'll be covering this in part two, but basically essentially what we're doing to make this effect is we're creating a mask. This happens to be a static image, which was very easy to make, and there's a few techniques to doing this. Um, and that we, we're going to do in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. But you can see, basically, there's an animation behind it. So if I actually would just go ahead and delete this, play the animation, you'll see we have this large image back here that's being masked by that, that, that template that I created in Photoshop. So I'll bring that back, and then I just brought some text to kind of sell it. But you don't necessarily have to do this in Photoshop. You can do it in PowerPoint, and I want to show you how to do that. But before we do that, let's start off with the animation. In the animation, if uh, first of all, I'm going to go up to Animation and make sure my animation pane is visible, which I mine is, and just click on Animation Pane, and that actually hid mine and brings it back, and here are my three animations that I have applied to this one slide. It's one thing that's kind of nice about PowerPoint 2010, you can add multiple animations to a single image. Now, what I'm going to do here, if I just play this, you'll see that animation, and you'll see how it, it grows and, and enlarges, and then, of course, we're going to mask that. But let's go ahead and apply these animations. So I'm going to go ahead and select all three of those, get rid of them. First thing I'm going to do is select the image. So we're going to add our first animation, which is going to basically be a shrink. So I'm going to go up here to my animation presets and choose grow and shrink. Now, a lot of the animations, as you see here, if you look at them, they're like over, you know, overkill. A little bit too much. So we can adjust those. That's kind of nice thing. All of these things we can adjust. All right, so we applied now the shrink. Let's go ahead and we have two ways to get to the, the areas we want to make adjust our settings. I can click on the drop down menu, click one, and click on timing, or I just like to click on the timeline. And that's much easier. So it's only one click. I like to keep things very simple. First thing we want to ask ourselves is when we come to this slide, do we want the animation to start immediately or start on its own? without being prompted when the slide comes up? Or do we want to wait and the slide comes up and then I click my mouse and then that'll start the animation sequence? Well, I'm going to choose with previous. I want it to actually start uh, after the slide comes up. In fact, I'm going to have a delay 0.5 seconds and the duration of the animation is going to be, let's go with 10 seconds. That looks good. Now I want to choose effect. Now, this is the size. Now, the way this is grow and shrink, this is uh, started at 150%. So it's actually increasing larger. So what I want to do is adjust this to, uh, let's say, 120. And I need to hit Enter. Very important. Hit Enter. And that applies it. Make sure the number is there. Now, we can adjust these bars a little bit to get our time in here that we want. Okay. But what I'm going to do is, I have some presets. I'm just going to type it in here because the fact of the matter is, you're going to want to remember this for the next one because we're going to apply three settings. We're going to use the same setting for all three. So I'm going to go 1.46. And I'm going to choose here 2.92. And I should actually kind of point out to you 
what smooth start and smooth end is. This is kind of uh, emulating real life motion. In video, we call this easy ease in or easy ease out or ease in, ease out, depending on the video program. But essentially what happens in real life is this. If I were to start running, I go from a stop position and I'm going to run <laughs> five miles per hour. Well, I'm not going to go from zero to five just like that. It's I'm going to have to build up to that. And it's going to take a few seconds or in my case, a few minutes. But it kind of I start off slower and I build into the speed. And it's the same with cars or any type of motion. And what we're doing here is emulating that. The same thing if I'm going to stop running, I just don't stop because the body just doesn't stop unless you hit a brick wall. The body will just continue or a car will continue to move or slow down. And it's a gradual process depending on what you're doing. So what this is doing is emulating that those natural movements. So think of it that way. I'm going to do OK. Now, I'm going to view that animation here. And you see now it's growing as it builds. That's good. Let's add another animation. Let's choose the image. Again, we want to choose the image. We want to make sure we click on add animation because if I just hit another animation, it's going to apply an animation underneath it. But we want to actually apply this animation directly to this. So they all happen at the same time. If I were just to come up here, for example, choose the image, and let's say I just added desaturation, it's going to replace the animation that's right there, and that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to undo that, and I want to add an animation to this. So I'm going to go to Add Animation, and this time I'm going to choose Spin. And again, way over the top. I don't want that spin at all. But if I click on the settings, let's go ahead and again, same settings as before. So start with Previous, Delay 0.5, Duration of the Animation 10 seconds, The Effects we're going to way tone this down. Let's go with three. Hit enter. Our smooth start, we're going to set to 1.46. And you might actually have to write this down. So you remember it. Uh, 2.92. And do OK. And we have one more setting to do. In fact, we preview this. It'll show the two effects together. So now we have it growing slightly and rotating great okay let's add one more animation choose the image add animation again otherwise you'll replace what you have there and we're going to choose one down here says lines and again a little more dramatic than i want but let's go ahead and make our adjustments here i'm going to go ahead on start with previous delay 0.5 duration seven seconds Oops, excuse me, 10 seconds. And smooth start, let's go with 1.46. These are all identical. That's the nice thing about it. And unlocked looks good. Do that. Now I'm going to adjust. This is going down quite a ways down here. So what I want to do is bring this up. And that looks good. I just want it. The green is where it starts, red is where it finishes. I just want it to be subtle. Animation doesn't always have to be something that's going to be very dramatic. And let's sample that. All right, so it's growing out and it's kind of coming down towards the left side here is what I want. That looks good. Okay, we have completed the animation. Now let's go ahead and mask this in PowerPoint. Because I have a solid background here, masking is going to be very simple. If I had a gradient background or if I had a graphic um, style background that didn't quite, it may be easier to do this in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. And that's what I did with the original image I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial. But because we have a solid background, this is going to be fairly simple. So we're going to go ahead and create our mask. And really, it's not a mask per se, but it's kind of creating a mask like in other programs where we're basically hiding something. So I'm going to go up here and insert a shape, and we're going to use the um, rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to come up here and create my first part. I'm going to right click on this, format styles, and I'm going to choose the color of the background. And I'm going to make sure I get rid of the line. And we can actually adjust this a little bit. That looks good. And I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm going to press down the control key and drag this down. Now, 
just for sake of time, there's no need to go back and create another marquee tool for the sides. I'm just gonna use this, just like I did for the, for the bottom, from the top. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. And this time, I'm just gonna go ahead and resize this, bring it up, and come over here. And that's looking good. And I'm again, duplicate it by pressing down and holding down the control key on the PC or the command key on the Mac and drag this over here. And we have a mask. I like that. Now, last thing we're gonna do here is gonna add one yet one more shape. And this is gonna act as our frame. So let's go ahead and grab that. Right click, format shape. This time we turn off the fill. We're gonna add a line color of white or whatever color you want. And line style, we're gonna go up to, let's say six. And I'm gonna do close. And you know what? One more thing I'm gonna do with that mask by double click on it. Right click, format shape, let's add a drop shadow. And I could have done that from the menu above as well. So let's go ahead and add a drop shadow. That looks good. So we kind of have a drop shadow there and we're good. Now, one thing we may want to test is down here, we may have the edge. We want to make sure the image is showing through. So just take a look and make sure you don't see the, that image peeking its, its head around any of the edges and it's not and that's looking good. And by the way, to simply apply this, we could just duplicate this slide and replace this photo and apply the same attributes. By the way, to apply an attribute to another photo, I'm just gonna copy this photo if I come over here, there's no act nothing applied to this. You see the animation pane? If I paste this here, select this, then with the animation tab, select it, make sure I'm gonna click on the animation painter. And since this image has is, is, is been selected, it's gonna paint on, you'll see the paintbrush, the attributes to that image. So it's an easy way to, and I can delete, make sure I, Three, two, one, one. So now I can play with this and I may have to move it around. And then if I wanted to, I could copy the mask from the previous one. So there you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to learn how to do masking using Photoshop and Photoshop elements, specifically if you have a gradient or graphic background, see part two. Until the next time, hope you always find unique ways to make your presentation more editable. Take care.